to present, but since I'm a configurator and I was told to do this, I am going to show hardware and configurations because that's what I like. Um, uh, so I decided to take uh, a cross-section of uh, things that Aurora worked on over the past 20 years, and it's going to be things that are uh, related to um, eVTOL uh, a little bit broadly. Um, I tossed in there something that's not strictly electric or hybrid electric, but you'll see why. Um, and these are all things that we actually built uh, and, uh, and flown for the vast majority of these. So uh, moving forward. Uh, this was uh, GoldenEye. Uh, it was designed for a DARPA mission for a clandestine UAV that would fly to a certain location and then perch and stare. So the payload was this uh, camera here. And uh, in order to be clandestine, it had to be quiet. So we had a pretty strict uh, acoustic requirement. And uh, um, this was met by having a ducted fan configuration that in, in had uh, three technologies in it. One was uh, uh, the muffler for the Wankel engine, but we're doing electric, so we don't care about that. Uh, the other things were the particular design of the rotor, which had uh, 11 thin blades, which uh, gave a 15 dB uh, decrease over the uh, baseline four-bladed rotor that had existed in a previous iteration. And then this uh, a duct, which has kind of like a deep, um, it, it's a deep duct, so it's a, it's a long uh, uh, cord to diameter ratio duct. It had uh, a liner that was tuned to a particular frequency, and that uh, really damped a lot of, of the noise. Uh, and then there were veins in the exhaust that probably also helped. But uh, it, it was pretty remarkable. Um, and uh, it had some uh, uh, directional uh, characteristics. Uh, it was once put uh, on a thrust stand on its side. And uh, from the sides, you could hear the noise. But then you get directly underneath. And all you could hear was kind of like a, a whoosh in your hair. So um, that was interesting. And then, of course, you can also see the supports for the, uh, the center body are not radial. Uh, they're arranged so that the blades don't pass all at once over uh, the stators. Uh, moving on, uh, around, uh, GoldenEye was around early 2000s, and uh, we did something later called uh, Excalibur, which uh, was a funny bird. Uh, it looks like a zodiac with wings in the back. Uh, that's, that was at least my impression the first time I saw it. This is a truly hybrid electric uh, vehicle. It has uh, 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 a gas turbine that can tilt for vertical flight. And in our subscale, which is what you're seeing here, it was actually the, uh, a Williams uh, cruise missile engine of 700 pounds of thrust. Note, they don't like to be throttled down. They're designed only for one cruise condition. So in hover, throttling that was a little bit of an issue. Uh, there were also three uh, lift motors in uh, the nose and in the wings. And uh, the ones in the wings actually retracted uh, for horizontal flight. They were kind of like a, a drawer mechanism, which is pretty particular. I haven't seen it before or since. Uh, the front fan had uh, uh, a cover that would slide over it. And uh, we flew this in 2009 at uh, Aberdeen Proving Grounds, and we did only hover tests. But, uh, uh, about one third of the total hover thrust came from batteries powering the electric lift fans. Um, next, uh, moving on to around uh, the end of 2013, uh, Dr. Ashish Bagai at uh, DARPA decided to start a program called VTOL Explain with very ambitious goals. Um, there were four KPPs, really. Uh, there was an L over D effective of 10, which is roughly twice what a helicopter can achieve, a useful load of 40%, um, a cruise speed of between 300 and 400 knots, once again, twice what a helicopter can do. And uh, the last one was a figure of merit in hover of 75%. Uh, so essentially, it forced you to do a vehicle which wasn't heavily compromised in one uh, uh, part of the envelope, and that's how it would get really good performance there, but then it would not perform as well in other parts of the envelope. 
So this vehicle was about 12,000 pounds, 60 foot wingspan, and uh, you see for reference the Katia dude standing next to it. And uh, anytime I do CAD, I should have the Katia dude on because uh, for two years I saw this on my screen and I got used to it. And then one day, uh, one of the ducted fans for the wing shows up and it's, I can fit through it and it was a come to Jesus moment. Um, anyway, the heart of uh, the XV24, uh, which you probably uh, would be interested in if you paid attention to hybrid electric, was this uh, uh, 6,000 shaft horsepower Allison, well, Rolls Royce really, AE1107, which is half of what's in a V22. And uh, it's driving through a shaft, uh, this gearbox made by Rolls Royce. Uh, and there's three one megawatt generators right here uh, made by Honeywell. And uh, these are used to drive 24 fans, 18 in the wings and six in the canard. And it works kind of nicely because if you have three uh, generators and you have a multiple of three in terms of uh, um, number of motors, you can do mapping so that you're very failure tolerant. Uh, you will also note that there are massive conductors that go to each motor. Um, and um, I think that a lot of the value of doing an exercise like this is you build something and you find out all the things that you didn't know and uh, all the little problems that you have to solve. One thing that's very particular about this vehicle is, is that it has a synchronous transmission. There's no inverters, it's AC to AC. So there are problems like how do you start them? from a standstill? Or uh, how do you deal with a bird strike that takes one offline? And these are all pretty complex things that unless you build hardware, you never get around to um, solving. So uh, this was a pretty fun project to, to work on, pretty complex, by far the, the most complex airplane we ever did at uh, Aurora. Uh, in order to test uh, the complex uh, aeropropulsive couplings, uh, because this wing, uh, the, its behavior is strongly dictated by the throttle on the, on the fan that's inside. Uh, in order to test uh, uh, the, and build an aero database, we built this uh, subscale vehicle demonstrator, which weighs about 300 pounds, and we flew that at uh, Webster Field, uh, both in hover and uh, through transition to fine tune our, uh, our triplex. As a matter of fact, only a simplex version was flying, but the principle remains the same. Uh, the other interesting thing about this vehicle is that it had uh, about 120 pounds of lithium ion batteries in it. So you're getting to the power <laughs> levels that are uh, similar to what you would see on an eVTOL. Um, so, um, uh, lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, our uh, EV toll. You, you may have seen uh, the talk that I gave on Tuesday, but uh, um, we have this configuration which has uh, twin booms and a three lifting surface. Uh, what we like about this is that we were able to demonstrate that the uh, interference between the lift rotors and the flying surfaces was very manageable. It has a very robust transition corridor, very wide. Uh, which is something that it's, it's kind of hard to model, but doing the subscale helped us gain some confidence. It's a two-passenger airplane, including luggage. Uh, it results in a vehicle that is between 850 and 1,000 uh, kilograms, and uh, uh, it's a separate lift plus cruise, meaning that uh, the eight lift rotors are not used in cruise. There's a thruster propeller in the back for that and uh, it cruises at around 180 kilometers per hour. Our uh, nominal mission was a 50 kilometer uh, segment, and we decided to model the mission with you know, a, a vertical takeoff up to say uh, 50 meters in case there are obstacles around your landing zone, a uh, transition, a climb to altitude, and then uh, a cruise segment, just purely wingborne, a descent and you're doing the essentially the opposite of the the takeoff where you're descending vertically um, 
50 meters. And that's a very energy intensive phase of flight. Uh, one very important thing is the, the reserve part. And uh, we don't have a common standard yet, and we're eagerly awaiting that. For now, what we assumed was that uh, at the very last moment, after you've spent energy slowing down and coming down to the ground, the landing zone is fouled up for one reason or another. And now you have to take off again, go straight up 50 meters, do a uh, transition to cruise flight, fly around for five minutes, which corresponds to about 15 kilometers. So you have to find a landing spot within 15 kilometers, which seems reasonable for a VTOL airplane. Uh, and then uh, go down again uh, for a final landing. And of course, this is subject to, to changes as soon as we find out what the, the actual um, requirements are. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a, a video that, can you start the video, please? Um, that shows a little bit of the, the con ops. This was uh, operate out of uh, a Verti port, very similar to what you've seen in the Uber Elevate video. Um, I think that the difference is we would use a little bit more infrastructure to get on the, on the vehicle and we're using wheel motors to move the vehicle around, which means that you don't really have people walking around airplanes and the spinny bits that much. That's really how we get away with having low rotors. I think a door-to-door -door system would have to look different. There, there's no way around that. So the vehicle takes off under the lift rotor power. And then once it reaches an altitude that is clear of obstacles, it starts uh, transitioning using the thruster motor. And uh, it's on its way. Um, we don't expect it to be particularly noisy once it's on the wing, but the, the, the takeoff and landing parts are really the, the, the tough uh, nut to crack. Uh, another thing that you will notice is we have this configuration that of the horizontal tail that is boxing the propeller, and we're hoping to get some shielding effect from that. So once it converts back to uh, rotor-borne flight, it comes in for a, a, a vertical landing at the final destination. And in case you're wondering why the the props are canted inboard is because that gives us uh, greater yaw authority by doing differential throttle. Anyway, how much time do I have? Um, all right, so I have the time for a few questions. <laughs>